In this video, we're going to talk about PBR in Unity 5. We're going to set up our editor. We're also going to take a look at our environment as well as configure our shader with some textures. So let's get started by setting up the editor. So here I have just a new project, just completely blank, and I'm ready to get started. So the first thing I want to do is just come over here to edit, and I'm going to come down here to my project settings, and I'm going to come over here to player. So here in the inspector, we first need to change our color space from gamma to linear. Here you can also set your rendering path. Since this demo scene is just using a single light, I'm going to just keep this set at forward. And now I'm going to come over here to my hierarchy and choose my camera. And for the HDR, I'm going to enable HDR on my camera. Now you'll notice that right off the bat we get this warning about this multi-sample anti-aliasing setting. And so we need to change this here in our quality settings. So here I'm going to come over to Edit, Project Settings, and quality and so here you can see that by default it's set to fantastic and with this default quality setting our anti-aliasing has been enabled so this is causing that issue with the HDR option on our camera so we're gonna set this to disabled now you can change your quality setting or set up your own quality setting but the main issue that we're having here is that this anti-aliasing setting here was enabled and that we need to disable it so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now so now when we jump back over to our camera, you'll notice that we have HDR enabled and that warning is gone. To add anti-aliasing to the scene, you'll need to do that by utilizing an image effect. So now we've set up the editor here to work properly with PBR textures. So next, we're going to want to set up our environment. So we can do that on the lighting tab. So here's the lighting tab and by default for environment lighting, we have this skybox, which you can see here enabled in the viewport. Now before we get started, I'd like to thank my good friend Anton Han from Alloy for providing some feedback and some tips in regards to environment lighting here within Unity. So you're going to want to stay away from just using this default skybox when setting up your scene. The skybox is just heavily blue shifted, uh, it's very clean, there's no detail, and you'll get much better results by using your custom HDR maps. In Unity, you'll want to use the same IBL that was used for painting your textures. And Unity can easily create cube maps from spherical HDR images. However, if you use the IBL maps provided with Substance Painter or Designer, you'll need to be aware of an issue in terms of brightness ranges. The brightness ranges represented in those maps are much greater than Unity can use. The reason the bright ranges are large is that in Substance Painter and Designer, directional lighting comes from the IBL only. So the brightness range needs to represent directional lighting such as the sun. In practice, the IBL will provide indirect light and directional lighting will come from dynamic or static baked lights. At this time, the ambient skybox in Unity doesn't support pixel values brighter than 34.5 due to RGBM encoding limitations. However, Unity will support half float textures in a future release. So you should keep this in mind if you're trying to use Substance Painter or Designer's default IBL environments within Unity. It would be better to use the exact spherical environment map that you'll be using in game within Substance Painter or Designer to get closer results. Now since this is just a demo scene, I am just going to use one of the IBL environments from Substance Painter here within Unity. So here I have an Explorer window and I've navigated to the Substance Painter program file installation and you can see that I'm in resources, shelf, algorithmic, environments and I'm just going to grab one of these uh, EXR files. So here I'll just grab this Corsica Beach and let's just place this here into our project. And so now I'll select the image and we'll come over here to inspector and for the texture type we're going to set this here to cube map. We're going to keep the max size here to 2K, and I'm going to make sure that glossy reflection is not enabled since we're creating this cube map for a skybox. So now that I have this in place, we'll click Apply to create the cube map. And so here we have the cube map that Unity generated for us. So next, I'm going to come over here to my Create tab, and I'm going to create a new material, and we'll just call this Skybox. And here for this material under the shader, we're going to switch this to Skybox Cube Map. And so now that we have this in place, I'm going to take uh, the cube map that I generated and we'll just left click, drag and drop that here into the cube map input. And if I need to, I can use the rotation slider to adjust the rotation of the cube map as well as adjust my exposure. So now that we have this set up, let's go back to our lighting tab, let's take our new skybox material, and let's replace the default skybox. 
So here in the viewport, you can see that we have our new Skybox environment ready for our scene. Now we need to talk about some issues with environments that can cause discrepancies. So Substance Designer and Painter both use a technique called important sampling for computing environment reflections. This provides incredible accuracy and is great for painting textures, but it's a technique that you won't see used in game engines due to its performance cost. Game engines like Unity use pre-computation to make environment reflections more efficient, storing multiple copies of the reflection in the mitmap pyramid of the reflection texture. This reflection texture is created using a reflection probe that is placed in the scene. The texture has been processed, which is called convolution, using the main BRDF of the engine's shading. In Unity 5.3, the BRDF has been changed to GGX. I like to think of the probe as providing a lookup table for reflections. However, there is a limitation to this technique in that we have a finite number of steps of sharpness for our reflection in engine, and it's equal to the number of MIP levels of our reflection cube map. For surface roughness values that fall in between these steps, an interpolation of two steps is used. What this means in the end is that you will see discrepancies in the roughness detail between Substance Designer and Substance Painter and Unity's viewports. The other thing to be aware of is that the drop-off in terms of sharpness between the full res, full sharp reflection, and the very next MIP level is always the steepest perceptually as the reflection has both been blurred and is now half the resolution due to mipping down. So very fine details in your environment reflection will likely disappear. For this reason, if you're trying to tweak reflection behavior very precisely, the largest visual discrepancy you might encounter is in areas of your texture that are nearly fully smooth but not completely smooth. This is why you should always proof your assets in Engine. You need to use the same reflection probe texture size for all of your reflections for the most consistent reflection roughness behavior. Also. Baking small reflection probes like 64 or 128 pixels will result in fewer MIP levels, and this results in fewer distinct steps of reflection sharpness. So in this case, you can see that if I just scroll down here in the inspector, the resolution size for this cube map was set to 128. And so if I look at this, I, I get a max level of seven distinct steps. So here, let's just change this from 128 to 512. And now, when I view my MIP levels, you can see that I get more distinct steps. I would suggest leaving the resolution here at 512. And again, be sure that you use this resolution of 512 for all of the probes that you place in your scene. Now, we wouldn't actually just add the environment probe here into a blank scene. We want to make sure that we have our assets in place, and we would add our probes in areas that ensure that our assets are going to utilize the reflections from the probe. But we did need to kind of cover this uh, before we start adding in our assets. So for now, what we're going to do is just start to import in an actual uh, asset that we can work with so that we can start to discuss Unity's shaders. So let me just import in a mesh. So here I have this upper body, and I'm just going to add this here to my scene. And I didn't actually set up my size dimensions or anything appropriately yet, so uh, let's just change my scale factor. So here I have the object in my scene now. And if we take a look at our probe, you can see that the probe here, let's just position this here. You can see that the probe size uh, encompasses here the object. So now we have our mesh here. Let's just kind of get this guy into focus. And uh, let's take a look at the material uh, that we're working with. So here the material was automatically imported. And you can see that the shader here is set to default to the standard shader. And as I mentioned uh, in the PBR fundamentals video, we have both methods or both workflows uh, available to us in Unity. We have standard, which is actually utilizing the metallic workflow, and then we have the standard specular setup, which is usual, utilizing the specular gloss workflow. And so like I said, I'm going to be utilizing metallic, so I'm just going to leave this at the default standard. Now, for our rendering mode, we're going to leave this to opaque, but we also have the ability to work with transparency, and we have different ways of dealing with transparency, either through cutout, fade, or transparent. Now, the Unity PBR shaders 
we'll pack channels into a single map and this provides a more efficient workflow meaning that you know we can get multiple pieces of channel data within a single map which means we're really only using one texture to get two pieces of channel information so for example if I look here at my albedo we can see that the albedo is going to be placed in the red green blue channel and the transparency information if we're going to be using that is placed in the alpha channel same thing here with our metallic map if we look at the metallic you can see that the metallic channel data is placed in the red channel and the smoothness map is placed in the alpha channel now I said we're using the standard shader and by default this is using the metallic workflow so this would be the metallic rough but as I've mentioned in the PBR fundamentals different engines are gonna have different implementations and unity uses a slightly different implementation so notice here we're using the metallic workflow however it's asking for a smoothness map unity refers to roughness as smoothness however that smoothness map is actually a glossiness map so unity utilizes smoothness as the invert of roughness so just as I said different implementations we're using the metallic rough workflow but instead of a roughness map we're actually using a glossiness map where black is considered rough and white is considered smooth and again that smoothness map is packed into the alpha of the metallic map so we'll hook up these textures here in just a moment but for now I want to bring your attention over here to this color swatch for the albedo notice that in this case this is set to yellow and you need to be careful of this now the reason this is set to this yellow color in my case is because I was working with this upper body mesh and inside of Maya I was adding different materials to account for material IDs when I'm working inside a substance painter and I chose this yellowish color here now when I export that and bring it here into unity unity is going to pick up that material ID color and use that however in the case of setting up my maps this is going to give me an incorrect result so it's just something that you need to be mindful of so in this case I want to make sure that I change this color and set this here to full white so now we're set and ready to start to export our maps and in my case I'm going to actually grab some maps that uh, I worked with inside of substance painter so here in Substance Painter, I'm going to export the maps that I've been working on. So I'm going to right click and go to export textures. Now for the texture set, I'm actually only going to utilize this upper body because that's what we're working with here. And so for the configuration file, let's take a look at this. So Substance Painter ships with Unity 5 preset and we have both the standard metallic and standard specular here. But like I said, we're using the metallic. So let's take a look at this configuration preset notice here that we have the ability within painter to pack our channels and this standard unity 5 preset is doing that for us so for our albedo if we look at this you can see that it's utilizing the base color rgb and for the alpha it's placing any opacity channels that we've been working with for the metallic smoothness rgb here you can see that it's utilizing metallic as grayscale so that's where we're going to get that metallic data from the red channel and then here for the alpha notice that here we have a glossiness now as I said before substance painter is working a metal rough shader however it has the ability to convert maps as needed for different implementations so as I said here we have this green value set for our button if we take a look here next to glossiness we have the same kind of green box here and what this means is that for this alpha channel we are taking a converted map which is glossiness so we're taking our roughness and doing an invert and we're adding that here to our alpha channel here we have our normal and then finally we have an emission texture if we're using any emissive outputs now one thing that's missing from this standard setup is the ability to have an AO output and so you can either add that right here to the preset or if you would like you can just right click and duplicate this and create your own and that's what I've done so let's take a look at this U5 metal AO version that I have so notice here that I've just added an extra output map here and I've set it to AO and for the grayscale value I'm using this ambient occlusion from the baked mesh data that I've created so now that I have this set up I'm actually going to use my U5 metal AO preset so let's come over here to export you can see that I already have it selected and now I'm going to export the textures 
So here we are back in Unity, and I have my upper body material, and now we're ready just to assign these textures. So for my albedo transparency, we're going to drag and drop that here into the albedo input. And for our normal, we're going to place this here into the normal map input. Texture hasn't been marked as normal, so Unity is going to fix that for me. Next up, I need to add my metallic smoothness, so we'll place this in the metallic input slot. And then finally here, we'll add in our ambient occlusion into the occlusion input. And so here in my scene, you can see that I've added these textures. Here, let me come over here to these gizmos and turn off that 3D icon here so we can see this a little bit better. And so now you can see that I have my texture set up from Substance Painter here inside of Unity. Here I've gone in and just selected my light and just rotated it into position to match the direct sunlight from my environment map. And here when I overlay the Substance Painter viewport rendering, you can see that we get a very close match between Substance Painter and Unity 5.3. So that's going to cover the process of working with PBR materials in Unity 5. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can work with PBR Substance materials.